uh, we are back. One Piece chapter 1074. Tame chapter. Wasn't anything too crazy, but like all One Piece chapters, important. It just wasn't super explosive. The cover story continues to amaze us. It continues to provide context as to what happened with Mads and that entire story and that group and how weird looking they are and how they become. I'm looking at it and, and judge he's gained some weight. He's gotten a bit bigger. Queen is starting to turn into a, you know, a, a machine, a cyborg, if you may. And Caesar, he looks like Lord Farquaad, but it, it, it's fine. He is growing as well, but now they're fighting. It's infighting amongst the group. Preview to rocks. I, I don't know what's going on here, but they're now infighting, guys. None of these people are good people. And so maybe they realized it about each other and then they started fighting amongst themselves. Themselves. We're finding out more about Mads. It's gonna tie into the story. It's probably one major thing that's probably missing from Mads. Now, once we get that, we we'll probably move on from this cover story. But you never know. The chapter starts and it, it confuses me a bit. I'm shocked. I'm like, what is happening? Did Kuma or these Kuma did they have another ability that Oda or rather Vegapunk tried to utilize? Wasn't sure. Of course, we've talked about upgraded pacifista before. We talked about pacifista from certain movies. We have the Mark III. This is confirmed canon to Mark III. These joints, they got powers. They are on a different level from the prototypes used in the Paramount War, which was overwhelming on their own, in their own way. They're saying these are better, but they have something called a bubble ability. It's a powerful shield that they use, which blocks certain attacks. Uh, as far as basic bullets, etc., it blocks that. What is the basis of this power? You can speculate, right? The basis of this bubble shield. Who uses bubble powers? Someone like Khalifa. It's cool at least because the pacifists, they're not necessarily sentient, right? They follow orders. People tell them what to do and they're using this bubble shield at will, like when they need to. Interesting stuff. But something just as important as Kuma is the subscribe button, all right? The subscribe button. You just got to Click that button. Maybe you've watched a few videos, didn't realize that you're not subscribed. Click that button, would greatly appreciate it. But now let's let's get on with the review. Sento Maru flipping on the world government is not something I had in my bingo book, considering just how fiercely loyal this dude was. And it is confirmed a dude at this point. Like we, we can see under under his dress thing. We can't, we can't, we can't. It's just he's fiercely loyal. Like that's a part of his character for sure. But because of what he was forced to do, he's now like, well, I'm just gonna be fiercely loyal the other way because I'm already a traitor. It, it is what it is like if there were qualities to possess these are the ones right Sentomaru, he's a riot i still want to know what ties he has with anel right like why does he have that insignia or just what his purpose is going forward he's a traitor and he's gonna let you know every single chance he gets that he's flipped and he did it for old man punk so Sentomaru gives out his mass order to the rest of the mark threes to let vegapunk off the island and like well Vegapunk seems to already be gone or is this like in regards to time period is this happening after right or before Vegapunk gets off the island it's like this weird back and forth that Oda is doing at this point where we think Vegapunk and Bonnie are both gone in the same chapter Oda is somewhat plays with you to let you think oh Bonnie's gone as well but you're like oh that makes sense he's like wait no 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 act no actually Bonnie's okay and like wait what bonnie was with vegapunk but bonnie she was somewhat in a different dimension mentally we could say she was there before but now she's certainly in a different dimension mentally luffy is somewhat worn out from gear five and running around and doing all that he's doing but it doesn't have any serious drawbacks like he's just he's just tired and he's just like i got worn out from running around too much and what happened i'm not the only person that that has said this or the only person that ex has expected this is because of luffy's different gears and what the expectation they created we started creating expectations of our own meaning we started creating drawbacks for luffy that he didn't have no other devil fruit user necessarily has a drawback with their devil fruit they just use it it's a part of them they can spam it do whatever they can of course use lifespan to use more outside of their regular capabilities but nobody has this limit or as far as we know magellan gotta go to the bathroom but that's by choice right he's things by choice other than that like no one has crazy drawback and luffy's gotten to the point where he doesn't need that experience explosive bump like he used to he just needs something a bit stronger where gear fourth or his gears beforehand it was a, a, a crazy bump where you could argue is twice as strong minimum i don't want to go too far as a gear five is is twice as strong as his base form because if he has so many abilities now he has grown to the point that he's bridged a gap between his base form and his gears in my opinion so the drawbacks as he grows is going to be less and less and less 
because he doesn't have to compensate as much. You feel what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. We got to talk about the drip, though. Okay, we got to talk about the drip. And Zora's drip is immaculate. He is standing like a bad bitch. But the drip is immaculate. Stussy, the drip is immaculate. I'm like, this is prime milk. It is of no concern to me because this, this is prime milk milk oda does make it blatant and clear though that there's a traitor there's somebody going around doing things to people that we don't like doing things to people well first off zoro's trying to go somewhere and find this person which is hilarious considering sanji had to stop him saying oh hold on wait a minute i know you mean well but we don't want to have to look for what we're looking for and then come looking for you zoro took it rather well especially since it was com coming from sanji I, li I like that moment i love those direction moments like probably my favorite gag in the straw hats at this point two strange occurrences stella body's missing obviously secondly the frontier dome is not working that's why i reference where oda is making it blatant that hey there's something going on right something strange there are other people doing things that we can't control but now with the frontier dome being the way it was they cannot leave where they are or they're going to be dead by lasers which sounds like a very meticulous crazy convenience something that only somebody really smart could achieve one of the punks obviously i think which one who knows so Oda has now created conflict with an egghead within us which is of course going to extend the arc we thought they were out of there but he says two things we can't leave without fighting the vegapunk and we can't leave without fixing the frontier dome so yeah, all hands on deck. Let's go. They're going to be there for a while, which is going to hold them there until the Gorosa gets there, until Kizari gets there. It's going to be one of those punk hazard, let's find the key to the shackle, which isn't a bad thing considering how good Egghead has been. Again, this chapter is pretty tame, but in general, very important. I'll explain why. Oda is creating this really interesting scenario where we're having multiple people look for Vegapunk, but we don't trust everyone as yet. Stissy's still with them, and instead of Stissy staying back, she's like, oh, well, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm worried too. I'll go as well. I don't know. I don't know if I trust Stissy yet. And it's and it's weird. And all the, the punks, I don't know if I trust them yet. Pythagoras, he was going to go look for something, and then boom, boom, right? Boom, boom. I did think it was a cool spread with Zora and Luffy just standing there or sitting there looking at each other. Luffy, of course, is still spent. And Zora's like wondering, okay, how? How, how much did you run, bruh? And Luffy's like, I run as, I run as fast and far as I as I need to. Which is like, what? It is dope them going back and thinking or reminiscing, not necessarily through vision, but talking about the flashback with Rob Luigi and Kaku saying, man, like them showing up is interesting, but I wonder about old man Iceberg. I wonder if he's okay. I don't know. Now I don't know. Like, why did he say like that? This then leads us to another part of the story, another part of the chapter where we're, we're reaching into Kuma's memories and we're being transported somewhere else. And we are perplexed because it drops us right in the middle of a scene kuma's by himself and some guys some men are trying to take them take him with them what what's going on here and of course bonnie's seeing all of this he mentions he don't ever want to go there again which i'm assuming is either slavery or war like right, one or the other where they're using him and kuma is from a special race that has been mentioned before so his body was probably a lot stronger a lot sooner he's a big kid they're trying to use this kid for their own means and this was crying right he's getting beat on and he's crying and i, I don't want to say they're celestial dragons necessarily but the figures they're very very weirdly and oddly shaped so either way it's a kid that's being taken advantage of by grown men and in the midst of what's going on bonnie's objected because she can't even handle what's already going on so that tells me there's some more scary things to come it, again as i've mentioned before oda's gonna tell us the story of kuma while kuma's climbing that red line right in the midst of his demise he's gonna tell us why he is the way he is which i love again show and tell you guys know i've been mentioning about that show and tell show us what's going on tell us what happened show us what's going on tell us what happened when you find out about the traitor or is going to show us the traitor and tell us what happened that's how he's been developing egghead and it's been a lot more effective people have been resonating a lot more i do not see it changing anytime soon now this third party is anybody's guess it could be uh another cp0 agent that we haven't seen in a long time khalifa she's out there just taking people out because hey they, they tried to replace her a little bit she's like nah this is what i tell you you can't work with hoes you don't know i don't know that's just like off top out of left field or it could be other pirate crews trying to get their hands on things from egghead which the only person i can think of is really blackbeard because he has the people and the resources in which he can infiltrate 
anywhere. The scoop of the century, though, is by our boy, of course, Big News Morgans, the strongest, well, one of the more powerful characters in the One Piece story, because of just how much his propaganda shifts the narrative, and he's gonna try to do it again here. It's odd because Big News, for the most part, is going from saying they're trying to assassinate Vegapunk, one of the more popular people in the story in the world, and he's done a lot of good for people. He's gonna shift that narrative and say, well, instead of the world government trying to assassinate Vegapunk and Luffy being on the island, Luffy's holding Vegapunk hostage and declaring war against the world government. Yes, that's a spicy take. Yeah, they're gonna owe me something for this. Because he feels like it. So much power. Too unhinged. Someone needs to, you know, check him a little bit. But the surprising thing, which I did not expect, Nefertari Vivi is, is there with him. The Princess of Alabasta with, of course, Wapple. And they're hiding. They're in hiding. We know Wapple did reach out to Big News when everything was going down with the abolishment of the warlords, etc., etc. I had no idea or would never think Vivi would be taking refuge with Big News Morgans. What? He does reference that she just stopped crying, which means she's probably still mourning over her dad. But she's like trying to tell him Luffy would never do anything like that. Like, I don't know what narrative you're trying to paint here. Luffy would never take anyone hostage, bro. But Big News doesn't care. The goal of the news is to be entertaining. He's there to rile up the world. That's it. So whatever the news is, it's been magnified or amplified to the umpteenth degree because Big News wants to get his rocks off. Strange character. I like him though. He's like, yo, this is my job. My job is to entertain and go crazy. Don't tell me what to do. I don't tell you what to do with Alabasta. I love it. I love it. Good chapter, important stuff. It, it, I think it's making things a lot more clear for people that didn't understand before. Uh, the traitor, about what, what Bonnie's gonna have to experience, and someone giving us an indication of the type of arc Egghead's gonna be. We got a lot to look forward to, boys and girls.